why do I own a Volkswagen Beetle? Well, <laughs> I'm a baby boomer. And for most of the years of my childhood, I was driven around in a 1966 uh, VW Beetle by my mother. Same color, sea blue. This color was offered from 1964 through 1966. So from the time I was a little boy, I was used to Volkswagen Beetles. And then when I was a young man, got my driver's license, the first six cars that I owned were all air-cooled Volkswagen. I had a couple of Beetles, I had a 1967 Type 3 Squareback, had a 1974 bus, um, and then a little bit later I had a 1975 Volkswagen Rabbit. So I was uh, really into Volkswagen early in my life. Anyway, then I, I became an adult and uh, didn't have Volkswagens for a while um, until the new Beetle came out. Uh, we got a 1999 new Beetle. I wanted to get it in 98, but of course they were difficult to get. They were just released at that time. And um, anyway, I got a 99 new Beetle and drove that for a while. Um, I, was, I taught history for 34 years. And when I retired, I thought, okay, what would it be fun to do? What's going to keep me busy? And my wife and I uh, both agreed that, boy, wouldn't it be fun to have a, um, a classic Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, she, her first car was also um, a Beetle. She had a 72 Super Beetle. So we looked around and lo and behold, uh, Bella here was 30 minutes from our house. We had assumed we were going to have to go out to California or Arizona or Certainly not an old beetle from the Midwest because you know the rust problems here are so bad. So anyway, just serendipity, we got very lucky and found this beetle and immediately fell in love with its history. What is this? <laughs> Look how cute it looks. Bowser, you were busy today. Drove it. When we bought Bella, she came with two large cardboard boxes full of uh, used parts, but also NOS parts. Um, and her owner of almost 50 years had um, taken meticulous notes on most of the service and repairs that had been done to her over the years. Now, the biggest thing that um, allows Bella to be in this condition that she is in today is because her second owner basically retired her from normal use in, uh, at the end of the summer in 1983. And from that time on, he stored her in a, well, in a garage and then basically a shed in his backyard for a number of years. He would take her out usually in September or October and um, go over her, you know, wash and wax her and drive her a few miles. But from 1983 until we got her in the summer of 2019, she was only driven a little over 2,600 miles. So that's why she has, uh, has yet to break 100,000 miles. So what I'll do now is I'll walk around and I'll show you, give you a little bit closer look and then talk about the things that we've done since we've owned the car and um, show you a few things that are not original. We purchased Bella from the grandson of the man who had owned her until uh, his death in early 2018. So the grandson had had the car a little bit more than a year and decided to put it on the market. Now one thing he did tell us, although I could tell by looking at the car, is that it was resprayed. He didn't know what year, but he knew Grandpa had it resprayed sometime in the early 80s. Oddly, despite this car being really well documented, um, there's, no, there's no paperwork about you know, who painted it or when it was painted, anything like that. But uh, it was resprayed, so that obviously is not original. Um, they did a nice paint job on it. Uh, it's not a Concours level, but it's still a pretty nice paint job for you know, a survivor driver car, which is what Bella is, certainly not Concours. When we got the car, it had original bias ply tires on it, but they were really old, they were dry rotted, they were in pretty poor shape, wasn't really safe to drive with them, so we knew we'd have to put a new set of tires on it. And we did go back and forth whether we should stay as original as we could and um, you know, get bias ply tires or whether we should go with 
Coker Classic um, radial tires. And that's what we ended up doing just for safety and drivability reasons. Um, when we got the car, we decided to go after, like I said, safety and drivability and reliability issues. Um, when her owner died, he was in his late 80s, and he hadn't done anything on the car for a few years, so we need to get her maintenance back up to, up to standard. Um, we had to have a couple wheel cylinders replaced. We had new tie rods put on it, uh, new shocks all around in addition um, to the tires. Like I mentioned, we had to have a new voltage regulator put on it. But other than that, it has been just super reliable. It remains six volt. It starts first time every time. She runs flawlessly. Um, we do, do most you know, short trips with her, but every now and then I'll take her out on the highway and run her at about 65 miles an hour for a half hour, 45 minutes, just to you know, keep the condensation in the crankcase burned off. And um, she just is really reliable. She's driven year round, but only on dry days. I'm not gonna get any moisture on it because <laughs> of course rust is the the biggest enemy of any um, vintage car. But she's, if not a daily driver, she's a regular driver. Um, we classify her as just a survivor driver. She's obviously a survivor and she is driven year round uh, periodically. One of the most impressive things we thought when we were, first went and saw this car was the relative intactness um, of the interior. It was obviously the original interior. It gave all the signs of only been ridden in by the driver most of the time, which is you know pretty common in a lot of cars. Um, but when we looked at it in 2019, the car was what, 56 years old and the threads that held the leatherette together had started to dry rot. And so the seats were literally coming apart at the seams, especially the driver's seat. Um, right down here, uh, there had been a repair. Uh, the man who, like I said, was elderly, um, he had actually tried to glue the seam. So there was a big smear of yellowing glue along here. The, the leatherette was ripped apart. It was coming apart all along the seams like a lot of the, you know, the driver's seats do in these cars. But fundamentally, the, the one-year-only gray cord leatherette was in pretty decent shape. And so what we did was we found an upholstery restorer. I completely disassembled the front seats. We got new uh, padding for them. Um, the driver's seat, the frame had broken on it, so I took that and had that welded, and then uh, took it to a lady who had about 40 years experience, and she did a stitch for stitch reconstruction of these two front seats. Same leatherette, everything's original, but all the stitching was replaced, and then put new, um, new padding under it, repainted the frames, like I said, had the one frame welded, and basically that was what was involved in restoring these seats and maintaining the absolute original interior. Uh, door cards, haven't had anything done to them other than um, cleaning them up a little bit. When we got it, the interior, this had literally been sitting in a barn. Uh, it was a nice clean barn, but still uh, the interior is a little bit dirty, but uh, took some mild soap and water and cleaned it up. Um, I'll flip this up. The interior, everything you see here is original aside from um, the seat belts. When we redid the front seats, we replaced the seat belt because the old ones were really bad. Um, let's see the, the uh, headliner here, that's all original. It had noticeably very little discoloration to it. This car had obviously been garaged most of its life. It didn't have the huge heat buildup like you get that you know yellows these out and fades and cracks them and stuff. So this the only thing that's been replaced in here other than the seat belts is we did replace the carpet. I don't know if there's enough light, you can see it right there. Um, the old carpet had just gone to shreds. In fact, some of it had gone to powder. And so we did make the decision to replace the carpet. The mats are all original. Um, so in the interior, it's all original, except we did replace the carpet and the seat belt. When we were looking into uh, repairing the driver's seat, thank goodness the original tool wrap was still 
uh, in the trunk of the car. I don't know for how many years, but I know it was prevalent in the 1960s. You would get a tool wrap in the trunk that was made out of the same material as the, uh, as the interior of the car. And so what the upholsterer was able to do was just take a little hunk out of this tool wrap, still has all the original tools in it, and make this little patch here to uh, help preserve uh, the original interior. Here's a better look at the back seat. Nothing's been done to the back seat. I don't think it was sat in very much. The couple that owned this car didn't have any children during the time they owned it, so I don't think much ever got sat back there. The back seat was not restored at all. It was in the condition that you see it here, which is pretty much new. Oh, here's something interesting. Um, it still has an original service sticker on it from about 50 years ago. I think this is 1971, so yeah, 50 years ago. I thought I would take you into the interior of the car and sit down and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the garage that uh, Bella is sitting in. Uh, we moved to this property in 2017, and I still had a couple years to work before retirement, but it had this barn. It's a 30 by 40 barn. It's divided into... Um, it was just a, a utility barn when we moved in. Anyway, I spent six months in uh, 2019 uh, remodeling the barn, drywalled it, put a ceiling in it, put storage upstairs, um, had propane heat added to it and so forth. And w the idea was is the front part of this is going to be a uh, vintage German car garage. We have a convertible v and BMW, so it sits on the other side much of the year. And then we wanted to get a vintage Volkswagen. Thing is, we <laughs> I had started the project, I was maybe <coughs> three months into it, and then we found this car. So when we bought this car, the garage was still in the state of being drywalled. It was, wasn't even near finished. So we kind of had to finesse that for a few months until, the, until Bella's garage was finished. And then I did to the garage what a lot of VW enthusiasts do. I decorated it with different Volkswagen, you know, paraphernalia. Um, I'm a retired history teacher, and so I, um, I study the history of Volkswagen, which is kind of fun. And then I also took a particular interest in the uh, famous, you know, Doyle Dane Bernbach uh, Think Small advertising campaign. In, uh, at the end of the last century, in 1999, um, Advertising Age magazine, which is like the Bible of advertising, um, voted the DDB Think Small Volkswagen campaign as the most famous and effective of the entire 20th century. So you can see, looking through uh, Bella's windshield, I have some original, and then there's a couple of Marie Productions uh, print ads from the, the Think Small campaign. It's kind of appropriate to have for this uh, model car, this early 60s uh, car. Okay, another thing you'll see is Bella is a deluxe. She was a top-of-the-line VW back in 1964, which basically what that meant is you've got a sunroof uh, with it, and you also got pop-out rear windows. Um, 1964 was the first year for the steel sunroof. That was 63 was the end of the rag tops. But it's nice, um, you know, you take a ride on a sunny day, you crank it open, and and there's an awful lot of fun. Um, the uh, the pop-out windows in the rear uh, are really nice. They do increase the airflow quite a bit, as all of you who have them know. And um, don't get any wind whistling or anything, either through the top or through the windows when they're closed. So, um, you know, we use them pretty much as they're intended uh, to be used. We did add the package shelf down below, uh, but other than that, it's pretty much like it came from the dealership. We'll swing around here to the passenger side and go in and take a look at the interior. The passenger side uh, seat was in really nice shape. We did add the uh, Bombus package rack down here. Another neat feature of this car was we still have the original key and the original key fob from 1964 from the dealership that, uh, that the car was purchased from. It's called <laughs> Motor Imports uh, of Dayton. And he drove off the lot for the first time with that key and fob. And we'll just do a walk around with everything opened up.
Okay, this 1200 cc 40 horsepower engine is original to the car. Uh, we have the birth certificate, so we know its numbers matching. Right now, it has just shy of 95,000 original miles on it. Most of it's been documented. Um, the engine is, like I say, uh, unrestored. It's original, aside from cylinders number one and two uh, um, head had been replaced. Oddly, even though we have really good documentation on the car, it's not noted, but it's obviously a replacement head. I have to set the valves at 8 and 12 rather than 6 and 6 uh, like I do on the other side. Um, the other thing that's not original is, as you can see, the uh, voltage regulator. It had the original voltage regulator on it when we bought it, but it died uh, about a month after we got the car, so we had to put a replacement voltage regulator on it. As you can see, it's still 6 volt. Starts, runs flawlessly all the time. Um, I'm retired, I have a lot of time. It's cheap and easy to do, so I change the uh, oil about every 1,500 to 2,000 on it. Uh, we do mostly short distance driving, so no harm in doing that. Uh, I run just regular uh, 10W30 conventional oil on it, just like it was designed for. And again, changing the oil that frequently, I don't think it matters a whole lot what, what oil you use, because it's darn near always clean. front here um, everything is original nothing has been replaced um, the original trunk liner there's the original tool wrap that has the that's made out of the uh, same leatherette as the interior and then it's our understanding that this has a tool kit also was bought with the car um, the tools actually look like they've been used a little bit you know fairly lightly but um, it's our understanding it came with a car. Um, the wear on the tools is, you know, looks like they've been used. Um, a little bit of marring on the outside, but as far as we can tell, this is original with the car.